Hey, 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 everyone. It's Isaiah. Welcome, welcome. Just give me a minute to get rid of some useless things here. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Isaiah, and this is another episode of Isaiah's Inspiring Evenings podcast. This is the Round and Up She Goes series. And this is the final uh, of a series of six episodes with uh, the amazing Lisa Hara. Hi, Lisa. Hello. And we are bringing this series to an end. If you've been following us on the, in the last six months, um, you will know that we have dis been discussing female health uh, from the above, the right, the left, the under, from every aspect. And today, um, Lisa, who um, whose biography I'm going to remind you a little bit um, in a minute, we uh, with Lisa we are discussing five simple practices and for deeper practices to care for your health, your female health, but maybe your health in general. So Lisa is a menstrual and menopausal health specialist. She's helping women and menstruating folks alleviate their menstrual or perimenopausal health challenges in a holistic and natural way. She leads a quiet yet powerful revolution for sacred rebels ready to radically trust their own bodies, cyclical wisdom, release trauma, and internalize shame, shame and erode patriarchy from the inside out. Big, vast program, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, you're not alone doing this. Um, there's um, half of the human population being women or menstruating folks, I'm guessing that we all need your lights and your ideas. Um, but also, um, when we come together, we can practice all those together. So, practices, because that is, I think, the summing up of what we've been discussing for a few months. It's, it's not about, it's not only about knowing what can help our health or our female health. It's also about actually doing something about it, right? <laughs> Correct. And also, I just want to say, I sometimes call them my five simple tweaks, lifestyle tweaks, because it's actually things you do every day. Ooh, and when that. we dare to believe that as simple as they may sound, it's enough mm -hmm. <laughs> or an amazing start, that's like uh, half of what we need to just believe that it can indeed be simple. It's not always easy, but health can be really simple. And again, these, it's not like five things that you need to spend five hours on every day. It's things you do every day anyway. And when you do them with I, a little I, bit I more. The idea is, is it's not adding stuff because the, the, the thing is, we all have very, very busy lives. Uh, sometimes over busy and uh, overwhelmed can be a real thing. So if you were coming here to tell me, okay, we're going to add five things to your days. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, no, please don't. <laughs> please don't. And I know me, I would um, I would go for five days. I would go for 10 days. I would, you know. Mm -hmm. But then at some point my willpower would collapse and I would let go of all the things. So I really yeah. think that it's it's interesting and very clever of you to tell us about things that we already do and that we can do in a particular way or at a particular time. Um, and that will help us um, be healthier. Mm -hmm. And it's more about doing each of them with a little more awareness. Ooh, I love that. That's the, oh, the, oh, that's the thing that this is all about. Awareness, attention, being more present in the moment with these things as you do them. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, let's let me just say all five and then we dive into each one of them. So okay. number one is breathe well. <laughs> the second one is drink well <clears throat> water. <laughs> Hint. <laughs> uh, the third is chew well. The fourth is move well. And the fifth is rest well. So as you see, it's all things that we do every day anyway. Yeah. Yeah, highly recommended. I mean, in order uh, to just survive, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, correct. The breath 
is not that's why the breath for me is number one because as i recently like said myself you can go a week without food you can mm -hmm. go one or two days without water but you cannot go two minutes without oxygen no. unless you're trained <laughs> <laughs> unless you're highly trained <laughs> correct yes um and, and still and still we go a long time without breathing well mm -hmm. and that's the thing the the breathing that i'm talking about is the breathing that includes your diaphragm the diaphragm is a muscle that sits at the base of your rib cage um just underneath your lungs it's dome shaped uh and when you breathe in you basically the the muscle needs to extend downwards into the belly and that makes room for the lungs to fill into the last nook and cranny <laughs> and be really filled with oxygen and that and gives the impression that our bellies are are inflating although you know the air is actually in the in the lungs right not yes in exactly it's it's a little bit the feeling as if your belly was a balloon mm -hmm. <laughs> um and important also it's not just this downward movement it's also then expanding your rib cage into all directions front back and to the sides so basically down and opening the rib cage fully and then exhaling and releasing everything and that ensures that lots of oxygen is coming into your body which your cells need in order to uh, produce energy basically to survive um, what it also does is it calms your nervous system <clears throat> we have talked about the nervous system and about the vagus nerve in one of our episodes so if mm -hmm. you are unsure and or want to refresh your memory feel free to listen back to that one um but it will because it stimulates the vagus nerve that runs all the way down into your gut that is the main nerve for relaxation and this massage if you will with the diaphragm that you're doing is stimulating the vagus nerve thereby calming soothing your nervous system and a soothed nervous system a restful state is the basis for any repair and healing to happen in your body if so you're double, constantly on fire effect. your body can't heal <laughs> so breathing well double effect yes <laughs> and you will see throughout these five simple tweaks that all of them like everything is interconnected in your body it's never only good for just one thing it has always yeah. multiple components and multiple benefits and um, because also the the massage that the breathing gives to your belly organs keeps them supple and smooth and well moving and of course also can stimulate digestive function and all of this and uh <laughs> You could also listen back to that episode because yeah. I explain all about how that specifically relates to your female health and the hormonal health because mm -hmm. our gut has a lot to do with our hormones and hormonal balance. And then we have the second one, which is drink well uh, water or um, herbal tea, uh, I'd say, but drinking one and a half to two liters of water per day to stay hydrated. Um, which is important, especially for the lymphatic system, which we also had an episode about. <laughs> <laughs> Told you this is basically a summary and bringing it all together mm -hmm. uh, because the lymphatic system is your body's waste removal system and it needs water and movement. So also the movement of the breath, that's how we connect it back. The movement of the breath will also stimulate lymph flow. And uh, if there is enough water, then everything can be hydrated and the waste and the toxins and everything can get out of the body so that your cells live in a happy, healthy environment. Can I ask, can I add something to your hydration um, advice? So. I recently read, because I'm working on my hydration and my general health uh, at this moment, that in fact, the number that you gave, so 1.5 to 2 liters, that is for a standard human being. If you are not a standard human being, whether you're overweight like I am, or whether you're very tall or very tiny, please check, because it's actually a number of uh, millil milliliters per kilo. So if you've got a tiny body, 
maybe that's why you're having trouble, you know, drinking two or two and a half liters. It's difficult. Yeah. If you're overweight like me, in fact, I need almost four liters a, a day. You know, so that that it, it can be very different. And I used to think that I was, oh, I'm doing fine with my hydration. And actually, no, I wasn't. So, you know, check that out. And did you did you find a difference when you yes, started I did. drinking more? Yeah. Oh, okay. I did. I found um, a sense of, of, for instance, when I walk briskly or when I exercise, um, when I'm hi correctly hydrated, It goes very swiftly. I don't have uh, muscle joint mm. pain or joint pain. If I'm not, I will feel it in my joints and in my muscles wow. mostly mm. during and mostly after an exercise session. Not that I'm becoming yeah. a very exercisey person, but you know, I have to move my ass. So I do. I do it, <laughs> um, and it, it 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 feels different. It does. That's yeah. Thank you. If if you can check the, uh, I've heard that too, and I know that it's just like the one and a half two liters is just a general guideline, and then you always have to look for your own body. That's true, um, but just so maybe that at some point our listeners can. Yeah, <laughs> can and uh, I'll check that while we talk, and and hopefully yeah. I will come back to you um, later on. <laughs> Great. So. The third one is chew well. And this is something that a lot of clients, like they are astonished and surprised at how much that changes in their whole system. Because chewing means chewing every bite so often that you've got this mushy, creamy texture in your mouth. So I, I remember that when I was young, my like in my family, they would say like chew every bite 30 times and 30 times is, of course, again, like a standard number. Mm -hmm. And there are certain foods. And I know we talked about that. Sometimes it's even hard to find chewable food <laughs> that is not already so much mushy. Mm -hmm. um, but Uh, there are some foods that you need to chew on longer and others that you maybe don't need to chew that much to get to the same texture. Uh, so always refer to that. But what it does is a it stimulates digestive function because digestion starts in the mouth and there are actually some enzymes in your saliva that start mm -hmm. the whole process of digestion that will be gone once it crosses your throat mm -hmm. so when it the food arrives in your stomach these enzymes can't work anymore And already so mm -hmm. it is important to get them in while <laughs> the food is in your mouth get them to work And, <laughs> yeah And it's actually interesting i watched a whole uh, we webinar on chewing <laughs> the other day um because that lady she said And I find that that's true. Like, it's not about chewing, chewing, chewing and resisting your urge to swallow because there is usually this urge to swallow at some point. Mm -hmm. But using your tongue to keep the bigger parts of the food in your mouth and swallowing the liquid, of course, that is something you do in between. And then you continue chewing on the harder bits that mm -hmm. need more chewing. And then once there is another swallowing reflex, you do the same thing. You keep the bigger mm -hmm. pieces in your mouth and you just swallow the, the liquid. And that way, something where you would have said 30 bites can become 80 bites without problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because you've got this uh, urge, this reflex um, satisfied in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the whole way that we eat and consume food and that leads again into the nervous system part because this will extremely slow down your eating process of course. it will help you stay mindful with the food you're eating really sense into and taste it will it will also satisfy your taste buds and they play a big role because what happens in overeating is often and she described it so well it's as if you were going to the cinema and you were there with your friend and you had your uh, your drink and your popcorn and you were sitting down and the curtains part And you watch the trailer of the film and then the curtains close and you are ushered out and can go home. That's what your taste buds experience when you just swallow 
<laughs> immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But where is the whole film? The ta- your tastes, taste buds want the whole film, so give them something they can sense into and taste into so that they are satisfied and therefore you will be, feel more satisfied and satiated uh, with every meal. Yeah, that and makes that is, a lot of yeah. sense. Of course. Plus, uh, if you are in any way, shape or form trying to lose weight or reduce your appetite or whatever, it takes roughly 20 minutes to the body to produce a a message of, okay, I've got enough. So if you eat very fast and you don't chew, you can eat a lot more in 20 minutes, obviously. So and still eating, not feel satiated very yeah, often. Exactly, exactly. So the idea is that our meals, the longer they last, basically, um, the the um, the less food we can, uh, you know, uh, if we chew them correctly, and it takes a longer time, and we feel the satiation um, with less food. So that's yeah. win-win, unless you're not trying to lose weight and you're trying to put on weight, which is a whole different conversation. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I love the, the the idea, and and it goes again. Uh, go and listen to the previous episode where we talked about that in at length. But it does mean that you will have to uh, find foods that are chewable, uh, and you cannot um, proceed with something like that and just uh, be drinking smoothies or eating everything as a mousse or as a puree. Um, Mm -hmm. And it is sometimes not that easy, but it's so worth it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I buy everything fresh and cook it fresh. So I like. (laughs) Yeah, but even, you know, um, I was I was um, prepping some cabbage the other day and I realized that, you know, I have this tendency to first I grate it and I was like, oh, let me try not grating it. Let let me try instead of a machine doing the grating. Let's have my teeth doing the, the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, that was so much, made so much more sense. And, and yeah, it was yeah. so much easier to chew for a long time because it was big and, and chunky and not already pureed or almost, you know, so much uh, in tiny bits that it was way easier to chew. Yeah. Great so, reminder. <laughs> Breathe well, Chewing drink well, well, chew well. And uh, before we go into the next one, if you're done with this one. Yes. Um, I found the water intake information. So it's 30 to 35 mil- milliliters of water per kilo. 35 milliliters, right? Per kilo, max. So 30 to 35. Um, and depending on how heavy you are, and that can be not only because you're fat or not fat, but it can be if you're tall and you've got big bones. Um, and again, uh, it also, uh, I found some info while you were talking because I'm, I'm a woman, so I'm multitask. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so part of the info that I found is that also it depends on what kind of life you have. If you have a very active life, if you're, um, if you're going to the gym a lot or you're exercising a lot or you're a wood chopper, uh, then you or will in need summer. more. Yeah, or in summer, uh, but you will need more. The, the more movement your body has, the more water you mm-hmm. need. Whatever that makes your size. A lot of sense. Yeah. Plus, of course, exterior conditions like heat. You know. And the, then also, I mean, me, part I've, of I've, sorry, go yeah. on. <laughs> part of the hydration also comes through our food. If we like, especially with the vegetables and such, we do take in. Uh, water through the food so there is also some of that yeah yeah for me that the danger is not in the summer because in the summer basically it's hot so it's easy you know you feel mm-hmm. the thirst in the winter though when you know it's cold etc cetera, etc cetera, you might forget to i i know that i forget to drink way more easier and that's when herbal tea kicks in because drinking mm. something warm is has got this feeling of you know comfort and and so I kind of have a, a, a an ongoing herbal tea in winter, and that means that it, it makes my water my water intake easier uh, to actually be drunk. Because having it mm-hmm. having a water bottle on the table won't do the trick either. <laughs> mm-hmm. Correct. Uh, well, yeah, I go with Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. I drink tea and warm things most of the year. <laughs> 
Yeah, I do too, actually. I do too. But I, um, I'm this weird person. I love the taste of water. I really do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love drinking tap water, you know, having even mm -hmm. from the tap like this. <laughs> so, and I love that. It's like this. That's the experience. That's part of this. Yeah. Also, and, and yeah. The, the, the feeling that it's alive for some reason, mm -hmm. although it's not in the tap, but, you know, from the, the spring idea, the idea of, yeah. of drinking from a spring. I think that's a memory from childhood, actually, in Greece. Mm. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that was one, two, three. Number four. Now we're number four, yeah. <laughs> is move well. And as you already hinted, it's like you, that you are exercising more. What I want to say is it's not necessarily exercise. It's more about a, an active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we've talked about that in one of our episodes too. I remember making it sometimes actually and intentionally a little harder for ourselves like leaving the remote control near the tv so that you have to get up to <laughs> switch the channel instead of just slouching on the couch the whole evening so like including these little things where we make it harder on ourselves yeah, I, have, I have one that will do the... that and the hydration so i my kettle is downstairs and I will mm -hmm. never put bring it upstairs, but I do like my um, my tea. So every now and then, and yeah. plus I forget to drink it. Sometimes it becomes cold, so I want more hot water, and that means I have to go down a flight of stairs uh, and move to the other end of the house. And you know, my husband very um, ni nicely said, "Oh, but you know, I can buy you a second kettle, and you can have you know yeah. hot water upstairs." And I said, "No, no, don't, please don't." <laughs> Yeah. please don't yeah <laughs> let's not make it more comfortable <laughs> yeah no you know we're com i'm comfortable enough so if i need to if i think yeah. that i need to move and that is a fact uh i will um make it more difficult for me to have everything accessible um, yeah and well this is the thing the movement will also enhance your lymph flow there we've got that again <laughs> um movement can like will also increase your digestive function it possibly also inc like um, soothes your nervous system or if it's something like a dance break, then it maybe brings just some fun and enjoyment into your yeah. system, which will um, yeah. definitely also be good for your nervous system. Uh, and when you think back maybe 100 years or so, how our ancestors were living, the way they were living, that's what our bodies were made for. They, they, they didn't think about going to the gym and doing strength training. They were doing a hell of a lot of things to just get their food on the table. Yeah. So <laughs> like, when we think of that a little more and how we can increase the movement and the activeness in our life, then yeah. that's like you don't, it's not about going for a run three times a week unless no, you enjoy it. For that. me, I, I, yeah, unless you enjoy it. And if you do, please go. You know, because that, you know, everybody will tell you that, you know, the endorphins that are released when you go for ex for real exercise or not real, but um, strong exercise uh, are very good for your health if you like it. Now, if you don't and it becomes a chore, it surely won't do you any good. But you can cheat with exercise, as we were saying, and, and make your life more difficult and less comfortable which means that you do that. I have, uh, so I've recently um, uh, have um, been gifted actually a watch that counts my steps. Uh, and I made mm -hmm. a, a very important decision that I'm going to walk a certain number of steps every day. Uh, and if I don't, so if, if in my going up and down the stairs to fetch some more tea <laughs> or going to the other end of the house to fetch some things that I on purpose leave at the other end of the house or, you know, going out or whatever. If by the end of the day I see that I don't have my steps, then I will go and walk on purpose on the treadmill mm -hmm. that my husband has bought for himself a few years back. Um, but it's not like I do the walking before. It's like I, I decide that at the end of the day, I need my steps. So mm -hmm. I will, you know, do that after supper or before, just before supper uh, so that I, I, I push the exercise in. But it's not like I have to go to the gym. It's if my life has, has not been active enough today, 
then I push myself. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. Love it. <laughs> And number five is rest well. That's the counterpart <laughs> to moving because resting is equally important. And resting, I think I've talked about that too at some point. Uh, there are different types of rest. It's not just napping or sleeping or sitting in front of the TV. <laughs> That is not restful for your whole system. That's maybe restful for your body and maybe not. Um, there are different things like physical rest that include sleep and napping, but also things like yoga, restorative yoga or massaging. That is a form of physical rest. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, things like emotional rest, making sure that you process emotions and let them flow through that come up during the day mental rest reducing stimuli um also doing like maybe listening to music that soothes you and your nervous system so that your your brain can basically start to quieten down a bit um then also social rest and for some social rest means being on their own to mm -hmm. recharge and for some social rest means being with other people to recharge and mm -hmm. it can also just depend from day to day that on some days you need people around you to recharge and on others you don't and that well and, and if you're if you're any kind of cyclical or cyclical you might well realize that this different needs for social rest varies with the cycle At least it, it yes. did for me and it still does for me. When I'm in Crone, I'd rather not see anyone. And I feel that the, the solitude will help, help me recharge. When I'm in, in my mother or my maiden, I want people. And that mm -hmm. brings me joy and energy and etc. etc. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Always listen to your body first and your cycle. This is about our <laughs> cyclical nature. So, uh, yeah. Um, And also things like creative rest, right? Like creativity can also mean cooking if you can calm down and uh, like really rest when you cook, if it's something you enjoy. It can, of course, also be painting. It can be writing. It can be whatever creative endeavor. It can be pottering. It can be taking care of a garden, but something creative where things can just flow. Or singing in the shower. Maybe also depends on the cycle and where you're at. Sorry? <laughs> Or singing in the shower. Or singing in the shower. Because sing also, I, I recently read a huge article about singing. And since I'm a singer, um, it you know, it, it rang a bell, a huge bell. Uh, it's also very, very good for your breath. So, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> and for your nervous system, because yeah. the vagus nerve runs through the neck. So yeah. activating, that's why you f I believe that's why you find little children humming to themselves mm -hmm. because they are soothing themselves with that. Absolutely. And it's enjoyable. Yes, it is. <laughs> Sometimes it's not for the public, but that's all right. You don't need to have an audience. That's you can do right. it for yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, and I said in yeah, the shower, so these... because the, the water, the hot water actually opens up the vocal cords, uh, mm. but you can try thing anywhere. <laughs> of course. And it will open up your body tissue and that will help the lymphatic flow and everything. So, and it will You mean to say that system. we are not a bunch of disconnected bits and parts, but we are a whole functioning system? Ah, oh, I might <laughs> uh, want to say that, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so these are five simple things. Again, it's, it's things that you do every day. It's just about being a bit more mindful. And I want to challenge you to start being mindful about one of these five things because we can't take care of everything all at once and we don't have to. No. So choose if you want to focus more on breathing well or drinking well or chewing well or moving well or resting well. And if you want some direction, start with breathing. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. It is that <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah, there is a few. There are a few apps about uh, that can help you breathe or learn to breathe if you want to. Uh, if you feel that you want to know more about that, just reach out and I, and I can. Um, I have a little program with the breathing si situation. 
Anyway, mm -hmm. so. That was the simple lifestyle. Piece. The simple things that you do every day and how you can um, pay attention to them and make sure that at least one of them every day you mindfully choose to do it well. Yeah, and just to recap, like all of them take care and tend to your nervous system, your lymphatic system and your digestive system. And those are the three major important, majorly important systems in your body for your health because they together make the immune uh, system. And so when they three are in order, there is basically the rest of the systems will just sort themselves out. <laughs> so they, th the, these three are really major and usually whatever condition we might have there is something in one of those three or all of them that's not working well mm -hmm. and that's when the, mm -hmm. the symptoms show up so it's symptoms are always just an invitation from your body to it's basically your body saying hey listen please listen to me <laughs> i i need to tell you something there is yeah. something out of balance here um okay and this can do a lot for your health already and especially if you are a healthy person then it will definitely enhance the situation and also sometimes there are some deeper practices needed especially when we're talking about any sort of symptoms and female health conditions and peri the symptoms associated with perimenopause for example in those cases we might want to look at the four deeper practices that are not as simple as my simple lifestyle tweaks <laughs> well you know um, um, but um, uh, let me start uh, if you, that's all right with you by reminding everyone that mm -hmm. neither the five simple nor the four deeper you need to be doing all at once on the same day breathe <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, and these four practices are eat well, feel well, think well, and surrender well. Um, and to me, those address the four layers in our that make up our system. So the physical layer, eat well, the emotional layer, feel well, the mental layer, think well, the spiritual layer, surrender well. Um, awesome. I and those that. are, pra I mean, practices. Practices means there is no end goal. It's something mm -hmm. that you do over and over and over again because you practice. <laughs> um, as for eating, yeah. uh, that is definitely a an extension of the true well. True well is a simple thing you can pay attention to and eating well is more about... Um, and. By the way, I'm not stating that there is the one right way to eat for everyone because each body is unique. Mm. I am always one for the approach of experiment. See what happens when you eat this. And if you experience something good, continue. <laughs> if not, yeah. stop it. Plus, we know, we, we, we know that, you know, um, well, I, I know that it's really important to also take into consideration where you live what's available mm -hmm. or what price, you know, and, and there is no, mm -hmm. not one thing that could be um, that something that could be very easy for a person um, living in Greece uh, to have one type of diet. And that same diet would be very difficult or very for somebody living in Scotland, for instance, <laughs> you know, I'm taking mm -hmm. two extremes here. Yeah. Um, sure. But there are, uh, nonetheless, some general guidelines yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, I like to point out. One is, of course, reducing sugar, uh, the refined sugar, <laughs> the added sugar <laughs> that includes uh, cane sugar, brown sugar, uh, cocoa. I think there's like coconut flour, sugar or something. They are still creating blood sugar spikes. So uh, keeping the blood sugar level as steady as possible well of mm -hmm. course after every meal it will spike because that's yeah. what happens during a meal but there are um, some foods that make it spike more mm -hmm. and some that make it spike less and if we have this this wave more or less on a, a in balance 
uh, that's that's what is important. So to not have this high up and high down and high up and high down. Then of course uh, alcohol is not. And, and I'm going to sorry. I'm going as... to come in with the sugar thing because I have to. I've been you know really taking this uh, reduce or cut sugar from my diet very seriously in the last years, and please read the labels. Because oh, yeah. you are you are going to be appalled. That's the only word that I can find. That in everything there is sugar added, and it's really in the most unexpected things you will find sugar added. So please read the labels, even for you know I don't know sausage. Uh, I have found sausage with sugar in. So it's like yeah. watch out. If, because if you're doing all the effort to cut the actual taste of sugar, and if you're a sugar addict, like many of us are or have been, uh, the instant you, you know, you, you kind of, it's a frustration to missing the sugar taste, and then you ruin the whole thing by eating sausage where sugar is hidden. This is annoying. <laughs> like, so read the labels. And also watch out for things that are, not named sugar but mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. are the same thing like uh maltodextrin i don't know what yeah. what the english word is but there is like lots of, of fruit fructose is often added that yeah, is i like think i think sugar. every word and every, like every weird word with e, like dextrose fructose mm -hmm. or sugar <laughs> some kind of sugar yeah sugar. yeah so and definitely you know, that one like, and then I don't think we should go for um, something of, you know, making it evil or, or anything. But really, there's so much of it. Watch out and make a conscious decision of how much sugar you actually okay to ingest. And and it's okay to like cut it slowly. You don't have to go all in right yeah. there. You can mm. start substituting with things like honey, uh, if, if that helps, or sweet fruit. Um, and like weighing yourself off because it is a drug it creates the yeah. same effect in your system like a drug so you would get withdrawal symptoms yeah, so weighing yourself up, off slowly there is a lot of people that can help you with that um so if you if you're looking for ref referrals just you know reach out to either lisa or me and we can send you to um sugar freedom or <laughs> sugar free people Yep. Sorry, so you were you had moved on to alcohol and I interrupted. <laughs> Which is sugar as well and toxic for our liver. And like those two are the main things that I say try to avoid them most of the time. Hey, everything is an 80-20 rule, like 80% yeah. healthy stuff that will get you through the 20% of yeah. fun or... Mm -hmm like an exception yeah. that is but I think that okay. you know for, for sugar just like alcohol my question is very simple question to yourself obviously it's is it really reasonable to believe that the same product will be used and useful when you're very sad and you need to pick me up and where you're very happy you know, it's the same so when people are very sad they eat chocolate uh, I used to be that person, and when I wanted to celebrate, I'd buy a chocolate cake. So basically, same product used to mm -hmm. up or mm -hmm. um, celebrate, so, you know, kind of bring me down. Kind of. It can't do both, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is, you know, there's a trick, and the trick is it's doing neither. Mm. So that was the avoiding part, but I want to end us on a positive part of what can you eat or what, what is what would I encourage you to eat, which is everything that is supporting your liver and your detoxification processes. So any sorts of bitter foods, green foods, the leafy greens, spinach, kale, um, and like there is like there's a lot of bitter food. Unfortunately, by now there's also a lot of foods that were once bitter, and the bitterness has been like uh, manipulated out. 
<laughs> because we don't in our in today's world we want sugary and not bitter mm -hmm. uh, so like reacquaint yourself with the taste of bitterness and learn to love it it might be a process you need to try a few times but everything that's bitter is very supportive of your liver and your liver has more than 500 different functions in your body it is the main the most important organ in your body Amazing. it's there for blood filtration for detoxification for your hormone levels for your blood sugar level for, for it's for everything <laughs> like everything goes through the liver so taking care of liver is important um and then uh, things like prebiotics is like um, uh, garlic and, and ginger and all of these um, uh, part, part of herbs, but also like things that you cook with. Mm -hmm. Like I love garlic. I put it me into too. almost every meal. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and then, Just have to make uh, sure that, that, that your beloved eats it as well so you can kiss without yeah, problems. Yeah. So that's it. True, <laughs> true. Um, and fermented foods. So mm -hmm. things like kimchi, sau sauerkraut, of course, for the German population. Oh, yeah, for the French <laughs> as well. Pickles, I love sauerkraut. <laughs> pickles, but make sure that there is not too much sugar added. Mm -hmm. I know that for the fermentation process, there needs to be a little bit of sugar in mm -hmm. there. But uh, like I think what happens very often is that there is even more sugar mm -hmm. added afterwards. So make sure to buy it fresh, uh, freshly made and uh, from the cooling mm -hmm. area in the supermarket. Uh, or do it yourself there is a lot of instructions on how you can do your own fermented foods mm -hmm. um yeah so basically these things are liver supportive diet that's what we need to look out for awesome. uh, citrus so that's uh, citrusy sorry. fruits oranges grapefruits all of that because they have a lot of vitamin c uh, red bell pepper uh so that like sometimes people say eat the rainbow and that is true because mm -hmm. the different colors mean the different vitamins. And have, if you have a variety of colors on your plate, then you eat a variety of vitamins. And yeah, so that's for eating well. But it's beautiful. And when it's beautiful, it's always better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, when, when your food is, is attractive in your, in your plate, yes. you feel better. And you, and you might feel... Good the fact that you're not having sugar or you're not having whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's certainly more, but I don't want to dive into yeah. this because uh, it's uh, also time consuming. Um, <laughs> but the next thing yeah. I want to talk about is feeling well. So the emotional realm as in feel in the first place, allow your emotions, whatever they are to be what they are and to be present because so often I know that for myself, they feel painful in the body. They hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we don't want to feel them. So we shove them aside. The thing is when this mo energy, emotion, energy in motion is shoved aside, it doesn't leave your system. It doesn't mm -hmm. get processed. It's stuck in your system and then it will create some physical symptoms at some point. So we need to get the energy out. Mm -hmm. How you do that depends on the emotion, depends on you, depends on what you feel is the best way. Sometimes it can be shouting at trees or punching a pillow. Sometimes it can be a good old snot cry. Uh, sometimes it can be purely humming and, and releasing that way yeah. or talking things through. For some people that can help. Uh, so whatever is your way, but allowing them and, and cultivating this presence with your emotions holding space mm -hmm. for them allowing mm -hmm. them to be there and that is okay even for the uncomfortable ones <laughs> um think well uh, there, there, somebody said once to me whatever doesn't express impresses so it kind of imprints mm. on the body yes <laughs> yes um think well to me doesn't mean a positive mindset per se. It's not about think positive, be positive all the time at all costs. <laughs> that is not what I'm talking about. It's about being mindful of the kinds of thoughts that run through your head on a daily basis, because mm -hmm. 95, 95 percent of your thoughts today mm -hmm. are the exact same thoughts that you had yesterday <laughs> are the exact same thoughts that you had the day before. Mm -hmm. So be mindful 
of what the majority of thoughts in your head consist of. <laughs> That's a good, a good one. Yeah. Um, and and if like I know it's not easy to shift your thoughts or change them because they are like they are what brought you here. They they are your system's way of keeping you safe. That's why you keep thinking them, and it's not the easiest thing to change them. However, it's about being present and recognizing, oh, that one again, and then having something mm -hmm. to focus your attention on instead. For example, you could, um, when you recognize such a thought pattern, you could think of, okay, what is a, a thought pattern that will be helpful? So if it's a, a thought that always feels like it's dragging you down, it's obviously mm -hmm. not helpful. So what would be a thought that creates a better reaction, a better emotion mm -hmm. in your body mm -hmm. <laughs> that feels better. And that is important, that feels believable because what I find very often in affirmation work is, yeah, it's nice to say these things, but I don't truly believe them. And then mm -hmm. I can repeat mm -hmm. them as many times as I want to, they won't work. It must be something mm -hmm. that is believable to you. Mm -hmm. And if it's sometimes it might just be, mm -hmm. I'm open to the possibility that and rephrasing it that way, but having something that, you know, next time you recognize this thought pattern, you can, oh, that's not what I want to think any longer. I'm trying consciously to think mm -hmm. this thought now and just yeah, see what happens. Yeah. It doesn't have to I work. Think, yeah. It starts with awareness. Try. And, and, and then it's, it's, it's like the basically whatever you we've been talking tonight it's not a one-off it's not like i'm going to breathe well for five mm -hmm. minutes and i'll be done for the rest of my life well it's the think well <laughs> yeah. is the same you know it's it's not um, it's not a one and off i remember when i decided to become a non-smoker again after smoking for 35 years uh it took me a month of really literally brainwashing myself into mm -hmm. believing that I could become a non-smoker and that it could be easy mm -hmm. and that it could happen. And it happened, but it happened because every day I was repeating to myself, mm -hmm. it's a possibility, yes. And then I went mm -hmm. to, it's a probability. And then I went to, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then I went to, it's done. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's like, I at this minute, I today I believe that I am a non-smoker and that I could not smoke, even if I wanted to, it's like I'm not allowed to. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe the exact opposite before. Stop smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mm -hmm. literally brainwashed myself into changing my thoughts. But it's a it's a lather, rinse and repeat process. And it works. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a living, walking testimonial to that, to the lather, rinse and repeat new thoughts and go slowly to like in increments every time for something believable um, because otherwise yeah. if it's you know if, if you to told me on day one that yes you're going to be a non-smoker I would have said this is going to be so difficult I don't think I can succeed mm -hmm. and then on day 30 when you know I, it was such an easy decision this is my last mm -hmm. cigarette that's it it's done so good Voila. Shall we move to the last one? <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> this, is, this is, is the one that... Surrender I, oh, will. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. Go on. Tell me. <laughs> uh, surrender well. The spiritual realm, but it also addresses others. Um, to me, it speaks of surrendering to something that is bigger than just you. Trusting that there is something that supports you and that you don't have to hold it all up and together all the time. You as this one little human. <laughs> and I know that a lot of, especially women, feel very, very alone and left alone. And they are left down, left alone by the current laws and such in all different parts of the world. And like... It is incredible. And yet I want to tell you, you are not truly alone. When you speak up, you will find other people. Mm -hmm. um, and through that connection, I believe like it's, it's about connection. 
connection with something bigger than you, connection with the trust in yourself. Um, and that can be very scary. I think this, this is like the, the master practice, if you will, <laughs> because surrendering <laughs> means you're no longer in full control, as in yeah. mm -hmm. this graspy kind of control. Mm -hmm. It's about trusting that you've got everything you need to deal with any situation, but you can't yeah. control the situation. You just have to trust that you are capable of navigating it. And that's mm -hmm. a really tricky one. And also it's one of the major ingredients in orgasm, <laughs> you know, without surrender, without this complete takeover yeah. of something, I don't know, divine, mm -hmm. uh, orgasm doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is also good for our female health to be able to surrender. Yeah, it's about and letting go other people we can, and we can control everything, be the perfect everything. And at any time, know in advance what we will do if or when uh, and just yeah. switch to i know that i will find the resources i will find the help the support the community or the strength in myself um, even if i don't know which one today yeah and if you are so inclined also trust that the universe has my back or god has my back or the goddess has my back or whatever it is you believe in but trusting that like there is a greater force, a loving force that works for you. Mm -hmm. So things are happening for you and like you trusting that whatever it is that is being brought to you, you are already equipped for it. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. So that was my yes. fourth deeper practices and especially well. with these deeper practices that will take much longer to implement that might require even support if you want to you're always allowed to ask for support i'm here for example but depending on what kind kind of support you need i definitely have uh, people that i can refer you to um but i, yeah, I would think i would say that you know my one of my big things uh, or mottos is start now start small keep going mm -hmm. um and yeah. you don't have to do it alone, obviously. Um, if you let me remind you one final time that you will always find all of Lisa's links below or above the video or linked to the podcast if you're listening to us podcast. And you will find uh, ways to work with Lisa to get her um, various freebies or to get a session in a session and jump in and get the support and the help that you might need because they're they're simple even the simple ones they're simple it doesn't mean that they're easy and you do not have to do it to go at it alone you uh, are allowed to um surrender <laughs> and ask for help mm. or for support Trust. it's not always help it's just it's about you know not not walking alone and even if it, mm. it's not um coach or something of the sort remember there's half uh, of the population of this planet that is also a cyclical being so you know get some get yourself some girlfriends that might also and be if you don't know where to start because i know that like I, I somehow draw in a lot of clients who don't have anyone in their surroundings who they can really trust mm -hmm. in I, I'm I'm drawing in those people, so whenever you show up for one of my live classes, paid or free, you will find other people who are in a mm -hmm. similar situation, and you can yeah. create connection there. And yeah. who knows, become friends with mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. Um, and like yeah. I encourage you to sign up for my Monday musings, my weekly uh, e-letter to you that supports you in your personal cyclical journey, whether you menstruate or not, whether you have reproductive organs or not. Mm -hmm. um, but just so that you don't feel so alone and learn how yeah. to trust yourself and your body more. Well, I think that this is going to be the end because it's so beautiful. So we'll stop there. Trust yourself and your body more. <laughs> and, you know, it's a process. It's a practice. It's actually nine practices that we've discussed tonight. Thank you so much, Lisa, for tonight's episode, which is obviously too short. It's longer than usual because there's you know these these practices some of them we could 
do a whole episode about. Uh, so that means um, you who are listening, you might want more. And again, go and, and reach out to Lisa, uh, find her, uh, register for her newsletter, which is amazing. And uh, and or um, anything else that m you might find or interesting. But thank you so much for this episode, or five episodes. Um, if you um, haven't listened to all six, well, now time to catch up. They're all available. Um, thanks again, Lisa. And I can promise to anyone who's listening that we're not done doing things together with Lisa. Um, we don't have any plans yet, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to happen because I'm really honored that you were okay to come and share um, this in this um, amazing depth is yours again for and talk to us thank you